With proper safeguards in place, our computer systems would be a lot stronger and not be as vulnerable to individuals and groups. Hi, and welcome to GAO's Watchdog Report, your source for fact-based, nonpartisan news and information from the U.S. Government Accountability Office. I'm your host, Holly Hobbs. Cyber-based attacks on federal IT systems have become more damaging and disruptive. Federal agencies are required to secure their IT systems from these attacks. And in a new report, we looked at the federal government's ability to respond to attacks and the challenges these efforts face. Joining us to talk about this report is GAO's Jennifer Franks, an expert on federal IT security. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Holly. So Jennifer, this issue, cyber attacks, there's a lot of federal activity going on to combat it, and that's being led by the FBI and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, and that's a lot, but maybe you can start us off with an example that illustrates how cyber attacks have become more damaging and disruptive and these agencies' role. So one of the most recent examples is MoveIt. And MoveIt is a managed file transfer software solution. And it has been used by multiple organizations, but this included federal agencies. And in June of this year, FBI and CISA issued a joint cybersecurity advisory that alerted us that a malicious actor had begun to exploit a vulnerability found in this particular software. And to date, this has actually resulted in the theft of sensitive data of well over 70 million people. And what MoveIt really highlights and why it's so important is that the federal government really just needs to be more prepared to better respond, manage, mitigate, and even learn from all of these cybersecurity vulnerabilities and incidents And without proper safeguards in place, our complex computer systems are increasingly more vulnerable to all of these individuals and groups with malicious intent to cause harm to our various computing environments. So who or what is trying to make these attacks? What's their motivation? So it's not just one set of who and what. Threats can come from a variety of sources, and they vary in terms and types of capabilities and the actors and their motives. And motives is actually something that we consider to be very important as we watch and be able to effectively respond to all of these cyber attacks. So I I talked about MoveIt and what we've now found, that was a Russian ransomware group that was behind that particular cyber attack. But that's just one group out of millions. And each group has their own goals, they have their own tactics, they have their own motives. And to be honest, motivation can range from a group or individual wanting to impress someone about their hacking skills, but then they can be far more serious, like state-sponsored attacks. Another high-profile event that really is still ringing very loudly across the federal government is SolarWinds. And beginning in January 2019, what we now know to be the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service breached the computing networks at the company SolarWinds. And this led to the threat actor infecting several agencies' information systems. But what was different about this event is we understood their motive to be espionage on the federal government, which just means they were spying on us. So given all these threats, how prepared is the federal government in preventing and responding to an attack like this? So GAO has been talking about cybersecurity or information security since 97. So for the last 26 years, we have been highlighting high-risk areas that focused on cybersecurity or information security. And we frequently reported on federal agencies' cybersecurity incident response programs. And similar to a GAO title, agencies have made progress, but the work remains. They've taken some of the necessary steps to even standardize their plans and even demonstrate improvement in their capabilities for detecting an incident, creating analyses, and even handling and managing the incident. But what we do find is that, again, once agencies are able to fully implement these requirements, they honestly would just be better able to detect and investigate all of the cyber events that impact our organizations. So there are several laws and requirements that federal agencies be prepared against cyber attacks. 
What have agencies told us about the challenges that hinder their efforts? There are three overarching challenges that we highlight in this report. So the workforce issues, the lack of staff. Over half of the CFO Act agencies that we reviewed had a shortage in personnel to just carry out some of these responsibilities. The next area that we focused on with challenges was technical requirements in, in meeting some of the federal criteria, such as event logging. And event logging is important because it helps us to stay updated on system errors or even detect unauthorized activities across our networks. And OMB issued a memo in 2021 that really specified some of the requirements that were gonna be needed to capture some of these logs. But in order to do so, agencies would need to increase their storage capacity or their storage capabilities. But this comes with a healthy price tag and not all agencies have the additional funding. And the last challenge area we really highlight in this review is cyber threat information sharing. And the government really has strengthened its information sharing since that SolarWinds attack. But many agencies really do still struggle with the large volume of cyber threat intelligence information and the analysis of such a volume of data. So Jennifer just told us that cyber threats against the federal government are growing and that while agencies have taken steps to ward against these attacks, their efforts face some key challenges. So Jennifer, what more do we think the federal government should be doing to protect its systems from cyber attacks? The federal government really needs to address the cybersecurity workforce challenges, and that's going to just help us to be better prepared with the staff to respond to all of these events. We then need to improve the implementation of government-wide cybersecurity initiatives that lay out all the federal laws and policies that we need to adhere to. And then we need to address weaknesses in our federal agency information security programs. And this is also laid out in federal guidance and laws. Until we fully implement all of these requirements, there really is just going to be an increased risk that we will not have all of the necessary complete information from the logs and other events to better detect and investigate and respond to the cyber threats that impact our various organizations. And last question, what's the bottom line of this report? So the bottom line really is, without fully implementing federal requirements, there is going to be an increased risk that agencies just will not have the complete information to detect, investigate, and even then remediate the cyber threats and events and vulnerabilities that impact our various environments. And if these challenges continue, well, I said if, but when these challenges continue, the federal government as a whole just may lack the necessary critical information and insights for identifying potentially significant cyber threats that we should respond to. That was Jennifer Franks talking about federal efforts to respond to and prevent cyber-based attacks. Thanks for your time, Jennifer. Thanks for having me, Holly. And thank you for listening to The Watchdog Report. To hear more podcasts, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And make sure to leave a rating and review to let others know about the work we're doing. For more from the Congressional Watchdog, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, visit us at gao.gov.